What the f So I came back after a few days. I had this car delivered, I think it was Wednesday. Today is Sunday and found several red, black widow looking, red widow spiders. I knew this car had an infestation when I received it because I can see the eggs everywhere. Um, so that's great. So I'm a little mortified to be under this car, but I think I showed you guys last time. Here's the starter. I'm changing it out. I think that's the problem, logically. There's my replacement. I happen to have a spare since I'm an Alante guy. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the flywheel cover, which is right there. Where are we? There. There's one more 10 I have to get with a wrench. And then I'm going to take out the 215s, disconnect the, the power wire from the starter, drop her down. All right, so I hooked the battery up, got my booster on it. I do have another battery if this battery uh, gives any trouble, but let's see what happens. Tell the truth. What? Come on. I know it's a good starter I just put in. It's the only thing I'm wondering with that theft system armed. I know I hooked up the starter, right? I know it's a good starter. I've bench tested it before. Unless I, you know, I was rushing down there because of my, my spider phobia. And I used my electric ratchet to tighten up the little wire and the stud. Like, kind of broke a little bit. Like, it started spinning just a little bit. Maybe I broke something. Oh, I hope not. That would really suck. I'm going to bench test the, uh, the old starter. Just curious if that is the problem. If that was really the problem. All right, so I've checked every fuse that relates to the ignition switch, the starter, anything of that nature. I checked the big maxi fuses back here. They're all good. So uh, I just switched the battery. The battery was pretty weak. If I took the booster off, it was pretty much dead. I'm not seeing an anti-theft warning. Come on, baby. Oh, God. What did I really expect? All right, so this turned into a little bit more of a project than it needed to be, and it's my own fault. I'll admit when I'm wrong, I made a mistake, and as usual, it had something to do with my fear of spiders, it seems. So this uh, starter, when I went to put it in, again, this is a extra starter that I've had around for Alante's, bench tested it, I know it works. When I put it in, I used my ratchet to really quickly fasten everything because again, I was waiting for a red, black, whatever the hell widow to jump down on my face. And well, I did that on this stud here, which is for the signal to the starter from the ignition. And when it did, and I knew as soon as I did it, I said, oh boy, I made a big mistake. Um, it spun this within the housing of the starter. It's supposed to stay solid like this. It spun it. And when it did that, it broke the connection between the stud going and that wire there. It was soldered together from the factory. Just for comparison, I opened up and I bench tested this one as well. And it's definitely bad. You can see right there, that is how the connection is from the factory. You can see all the salt in here. But there's that solder. The wire comes out. It's soldered to that stud. And again, I ended up breaking that when I used my ratchet, electric ratchet, like an idiot to snug up the 10 millimeter nut onto the stud. And so when I opened this cover up, which the starter's in great shape, but I noticed right away that 
the connection was totally broken. There was no contact left. So what I've done, again, I don't really have much here to work with at my shop. And it's a Sunday, everything is closed. Uh, basically, I just pushed the stud back in and it jammed it with some electrical tape to make it tight. And so it doesn't spin anymore. And then I just touched that wire coming out the best I could against the stud. It's making pretty good contact. I think it should be enough to make this starter work again. Now what I'll end up doing, I have a couple friends that know how to solder well. I'll just take the starter back out of the car and I'll have them solder that up correctly. But for now, this should hopefully get the Elante to start. Again, my own screw up. And now hopefully she should start. All right, got the battery hooked up. I've got the starter put in. When I put it in, I was real careful not to twist that thing again. Let's see what happens. Maybe not a good enough connection to crank it over. All right, so a few things have occurred off camera. I took the starter back out. I bench tested it with my booster pack and it's working. However, it's working intermittently. I think it's probably just the starter itself being finicky with the damaged wiring inside. Wiggle around that terminal a little bit. And if that doesn't work, I'm taking the damn starter out and I'm having it repaired. So let me go ahead and hook up the battery and let's cross our fingers this time. All right, fuel pump fuse is in. Come on, mama. All right, we got life. She's not running super happy, but she's running. She's a runner. Oh, she's a runner. Beautiful. I know I may not sound excited. I just, uh, but it's a feeding night. Oh, look at this. Here's all the water coming. Oh. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen when I river. Run pretty good now. Here, let me set up the camera. Oh my god, it keeps coming out. Yeah, she's running better and better. Of course, it's got a brake light on. Typical Lante. Great oil pressure. Reading half a tank of fuel. Water keeps coming out. I gotta get that crap out of the exhaust. That might be the most water I've seen come out of an exhaust yet. But she's running well. She's idling smooth. A little bit of oil burning off the manifold that I spilled when I did the oil change. I knew that was gonna happen, but she's running really smooth now. Awesome, I'm gonna get her off these ramps and get her out of the building, let her breathe a bit. All right, I've had the old girl running for like 10 minutes at least. Took the ramps out. I mean, flawless. Running absolutely flawlessly. Smooth as silk. Not surprising, she ran a little bit rough on her initial start, but uh, she's been doing great once uh, she cleared the snot out of her. So the starter, obviously it's being intermittent. I'm gonna have to take the starter out like I said and have that soldered back together um, but thankfully it worked because I, I was gonna give up <laughs> I'm telling you I was it I was gonna give up at least for tonight I got work tomorrow morning I still have to drive all the way back home get ready for bed all that all right she goes into reverse I feel bad this video is such horrible quality all right I got my mirrors out 
Gonna take her for a little lot drive. Of course, I have to after all this. Headlights on. It does have brakes. The brake, what do we got for a warning? Center brake, change, blah, blah, blah. All right, it's not saying there's anything wrong with the brakes, but it doesn't mean there isn't. These cars always have problems with the brakes. I mean, it does stop. I wish this camera wasn't so zoomed in. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Some hiccups in this process, but well worth it. She drives awesome. She shifted at least from uh, first to second, I would imagine. Here in the parking lot. I'm not going to take her out the street just because if I uh, have a problem, break down, I got nobody to help me out here in the middle of nowhere. Oh, she's got all of her power. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. A little smoky still. A lot of moisture in the exhaust. And here she is. Alive again after a very mild flood. You guys see the flood cars that I buy. Cars that are totally underwater. This one, again, is maybe about a foot, foot and a half of water. Engine, transmission, all stayed clear of water. So it was just a matter of getting the starter. If I hadn't broken the replacement starter, uh, this would have been a really quick, easy fix. But even still, wasn't that bad. Only took me a few hours this evening with the F-ups, and here she is, running like a top. All right, so if you know my channel, you know there's my prison fence. Uh, you know I'm back home. I know the video ended pretty abruptly when I got the car running, but again, at that point, I was pretty tired, very happy with the purchase. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pressure wash the absolute hell out of the undercarriage and the body get as much salt off as possible and then because the days are shorter now and it's the end of my work day I don't have much time but just little by little I'll chip away at this thing this week try to get the seats and carpet pulled out and cleaned hopefully I'll have it ready for the big caddy show this weekend <music> so that engine bay was pretty dirty just hasn't been detailed in probably many years here is the finished product I'm gonna have to scrub the tops of these fenders real well there was just so many leaves packed in here but overall I'd say this definitely looks like a 21,000 mile engine really doesn't have any leaks look at how clean the valve cover is usually the paint on the valve cover starts to pit and peel off it's like brand new the intake plenum looks brand new. Everything looks brand new, as you'd expect with the mileage. There was a lot of nooks and crannies I had to get in. And like I said, you can see, I've been cleaning for probably close to an hour. I didn't film all of it because it's just the same thing over and over. But look at all the staining down there. Even though I've gone in there with my hands and cleaned, I'm going to need something a little more aggressive than just soap. But I wanted to start there. And I'm going to move on in a moment to the exterior of the car and the undercarriage. All right, so I didn't film the entire undercarriage washing because with the close lens on the iPad it's really tough to see but I got under here real good just like I did with the front blasted everything down with distilled white vinegar to neutralize the salt I let it soak for a while and then blasted the hell out of everything as you can see everything is dripping wet the distilled white vinegar certainly will help uh, it really is pretty clean under here anyway 
I mean, there is some surface rust, as you can see. How much of that is from the flood versus pre-existing surface rust? I don't know, but it's not horrible. Uh, this wasn't that salty of a flood, so I think this is more than clean. So with time ticking and daylight coming to an end, and I'm going to do the exterior of the vehicle. I won't get to the interior today, but we'll see how far I get with the exterior. So I finished washing the body a little while ago before it got dark. You can see the car is in stunning condition, every bit of 20,000 miles, as I keep saying. Now I'm doing a quick interior detail. Again, I'm going to have to pull the seats and the carpet, but just to make it a little more livable in here, especially when I get in here to pull the interior, there is a smell. It's not horrible, but, you know, it smells flooded. There's a little bit of mildew, mold. <coughs> at the bottom of the seats. I want to wipe all that up, make it a little more tolerable to be in here. I just wanted to show you yet another perspective where you can see the water line clear as day. You see the bottom of the seats? There's a line that's taking my camera out of focus and I point at it, but and you can see it in the carpet as well, right there. You can see the line right there. That gives you a really good idea right there of how deep the water was in this car. So I'm not pulling the carpet and seats tonight. I don't want to get into a big project on a weeknight, but I am going to tidy it up just a little bit because I'm dying to take this thing for a drive down the street to the gas station where I've got the good lighting and see just how nice she cleaned up on the outside. By the time I finished washing her, the sun was just about down. I'm also going to clean the wheels tonight, at least start. You know, originally I was so disappointed with the condition of these chrome wheels, I was just going to change them out for alloys, which sucks because these are really rare on an Elante, the chrome wheels. But, you know, from a few feet away, they don't look too bad. The pitting is pretty much isolated to the pockets, which up close, they look horrible. But I'm going to see, I'm going to clean up the face, get all this minor pitting off, and uh, the best I can anyway. And if they look presentable enough, I may rock them. You know, the chrome wheels really stand out on the Lante. You can see the center cap, Cadillac crest. The colors are in perfect shape as they are with all the emblems in this car. Let me go ahead and get to doing the things I just said I was gonna do. All right, here she is all detailed up. Well, I say detailed. Again, this was a kind of spur of the moment. Couldn't help myself. Had to get her looking her 21,000 mile self. I know I keep saying that, but that to me is the big wow factor of this car. And again, as I keep saying, sorry for the close angle lens. I swear it's gotten even closer on this damn thing. I don't remember it being this close before, but nice thing about this car is even on a close lens, it's got nothing to hide. It's absolutely beautiful. The engine cleaned up fantastic. Now the wire you see there running across the valve cover, that's my trigger switch for the starter. Again, sometimes the starter acts up. I gotta have that joint soldered inside. That's why that is there. Kind of ran it half-assed when I got this car running last night. You can even still see some quality control markings. For example, there on the water pump housing. I saw several more as I was cleaning the engine bay. Super, super, super clean car. Even look at the infamous Bosch ABS unit, super clean. Minimal surface rust here and there. 
You can see she's just idling along all day long. No more smoke. Oh, I tell you what, the camera looks pretty good right now. Maybe the zoomed in lens does have, it does have its advantages. Got a little close there so the mic could pick up the uh, exhaust note, but <laughs> clearly there's still a little bit of moisture in the exhaust. But as you can see, not smoking like it was before. Wow, look at the finish on this car. Beautiful, like 98% original finish. I'll show you one spot where it's pretty clear that there was some paint work done. Look at the taillights. One of the things that caught my eye on this car when it was on Copart, these taillights always crack on these Elantes. They are basically brand new. This one's got a couple of small cracks if you get real close to it, but nicer than like 98% of Elante taillights. And the chrome wheels, I don't think I've mentioned it yet. I went to work cleaning those, and as I hoped, they look fantastic from even a few feet away. That's not the camera magic. But if we get up close, this, I believe, is the worst wheel in the car. You can see in the pockets, like I was telling you guys, just years of these wheels not being cleaned. And the chrome is pitted. This wheel even has bubbles. You can see my reflection of my stylish flip-flops that have a hole in them. But anyways, uh, they look good enough from a few feet away. I am going to continue to use these wheels because they're so special and rare on the Elante. Even though they're not perfect, uh, I think again, from even just a couple feet away, they look fantastic. So I'm very pleased with the way they cleaned up. Now here's the area I was talking about where there was clearly some paint work done and it's really hard to match these pearlescent paint jobs. So I can't blame whoever did the work on this car, although they probably should have just blended down the whole side of the car. but. If you look right where the Pininfarina logo is here, up below that indented body line, again, it's pretty hard to see. They did a good job, but because they didn't blend it into the door, you, maybe you can see it. Brighter white here. This is more of a pearly white over here. So it is what it is. Again, I've definitely seen worse work. Otherwise, this car is completely original paint, as far as I can tell, and it's just in phenomenal shape. Now, you can see in the gas station lighting here, which I love so much, uh, the car definitely needs a paint correction. It's got some typical swirl marks, nothing crazy, no major scratches, but a paint correction would make this thing look even more true to its mileage. But even right now, as she sits, Still an absolutely stunning condition, beautiful Elante. Couple more things to note, again, the crack in the front bumper. It doesn't stand out too, too much if you're not looking for it. it kind of disappears with the headlight. Um, I do need to put a bulb in this marker light, but again, I'm gonna change the lens, I've got an extra. Uh, I may even, on my black car, which is looking more and more like a parts car every day, if that chrome trim isn't dented, I may swap that over or just pop this trim off and try to bend that back out. Wow, I am just enamored with this car. This looks like a modern S-Class LCD dash. I've always thought that, even going back several years ago when they first started doing those in the S-Class Mercedes. It looks so similar. You can see she holds temperature just fine. All the electronics are working. Like, I, like I've been saying, not a single fuse or fuse box got wet in this car. In the interior, I spent maybe a little over an hour on vacuum, wiping everything down uh, several times. Again, it's all coming out, like I keep saying. Well, seats and carpet, but just to get it livable for now. My new to me, 90 Elante saved from the junkyard. The price I paid, that's probably where it was going if I didn't end up being the high bidder. And boy, oh boy, did she not deserve to be there. Absolutely beautiful example. Has to be one of the nicer ones left out in the road. Now, obviously most Elantes were toys for people. They were garaged and well-kept, but now a lot of them are ending up with their second, third, fourth owners, and they're not being treated well. So I'm glad I have a real low mileage example like this to preserve.
I've got my other 90 as a driver with more miles on her. All right, I had to get a shot before uh, this guy here leaves with the brome because it was a nice little lineup. So here we are, really not even two weeks after I bought this 90 Elante at the Bayview Cadillac Show, the annual Cadillac Show here in Fort Lauderdale. Some cars have poured out at this point, but still plenty here. Bumped into a few good friends of mine, including Steven, who's a subscriber, basically runs the whole show. So I just show you this to show you that just because a car got a little bit wet doesn't mean its life is over. You know, everybody I tell about these flood cars I have, including this car and all the guys that came over to check it out. And you see, you say flood car, people's faces say it all right away. They're mortified. Oh, but a flood car, you know, that car will never be right. The electronics, blah, blah, blah. But if you know my channel and you know me, you know I've had one of these, my other white 90 for several years, that was a flood car, much deeper than this car. And I had never had an electrical problem with that car. It's not to say it can't happen, but if you know what you're doing, and I'm not trying to kiss my own ass, but if you know what you're doing with these cars, you take the time, whether it be an Elante or a Cavalier, you take the time, you take them, you tear them down, you clean everything up. And despite her recent history, basically being thrown into a salvage auction, viewed as nothing more than junk by probably most people, here she is today. This side's even prettier. There is no paint work, no major scratches. Now I've got the problem with the pull down. Didn't have time to address that before the show. Look at how beautiful the interior looks. And believe it or not, I have not pulled this interior out yet to clean. So as I've been talking about, got to clean the carpets under the carpets, get the seat motors working again or replace them if I can't. And, uh, you know, require me to pull the seats out. But I cleaned her up just for this show. You can see those chrome wheels from a few feet away. They look brand new. You get up close, you see their problems, but everybody's pretty much agreed here at the show that they're rare wheels and they'd be ashamed to take them off the car just because of that pitting. Again, I just can't get over how nice this car cleaned up. Shows every bit of 20K, as I keep saying over and over again. So let's go over here. I'm going to show you my buddy Steven's three cars. I'll say hi to him real quick. Take a look at a few more cars here. Maybe there's a few Elantes. You know, I don't like filming car shows because it's not nearly as interesting to watch on a video, in my opinion. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Hey, What's up, hey, Steven? What's up? I'm doing the YouTube video oh, of the hey. show. You want to show off your rides real quick? All right, well. Hey, give a real quick walk around. All right, so this is a 95 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome. Straight as an arrow now after that PDR yeah, work. PDR just turned 100,000 miles. You never know. It looks like she's got 40K on her. Yeah. She's got, got a lot of PDR work. I remember last year was her big debut. Yeah. But it was like only a couple weeks after I got it that I showed it. Have you bought any more Cadillacs in the past year? No. I think it's time. <laughs> One a year at least. I'm not, I'm not going to catch up to you. Yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> And then this is the one for Specialty Motor Cars. Yeah, uh-oh. He's here in spirit with this beautiful brome from Anthony. Still at, still at 20,000 miles. 20,000 miles, 20, wow. Miles. It hasn't changed yet. Um, I've only driven it probably two or 300 miles in the past four years. Jeez. Well, that's and, what uh, keeps her looking so good. Yeah. Got the Bayview badge on it. Of course, got a rep. Well, I don't know how Anthony would feel about that. It probably came with a specialty tag, yeah, right? right. What happened with that? <laughs> you throw it out? No, I didn't get the spec. He didn't, he didn't really. <laughs> oh, he wasn't them. doing those. Yeah, that was yeah, when he was in the infancy phase phases. Yeah. Got it. And then All right, of we got one Academy more. Gray, Academy Gray. Academy Gray. And this one you bought, what, two years ago? Five. Five years five ago. Five years. Man, now. time flies. I think so, the first time I came to this show, you just bought it. Yeah, and this one's, um, yeah, 2019. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first time I came to this show. Right, and I had got this card like December 2018, so it's like, it's almost five years. You're lucky. You got your bromes before the prices exploded. Yes. You know. <laughs> yeah, this was a good deal on this one, and this one's 101 thousand miles. So. How many? 101. 101, man, you never know it, and yeah. it's nice. You have one you can drive, put miles on, not feel guilty. Yes. You know, and then this is the one you keep with the low clock. <laughs> so keep all right. It nice and clean. 
Well, I just wanted to show your cars real quick. I was just showing the, the Flood Alantes here one week after it came from the auction. Now as a show car so I said how can I not show Steven's cars <laughs> while I got the camera rolling so like I said Steven's a good friend of mine he runs a great show here and he is a subscriber I think yes maybe he just yes, watches and doesn't subscribe I don't no, know no, no, I subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody I'm gonna get back to enjoying the show and uh, thanks again Steven for having it